to another episode of Homeschool at the Library. I am Miss Liz, and today we are going to be talking about space still. And I thought it'd be really cool to talk a little bit about asteroids. No, not those asteroids. We're going to be talking about space rocks. Rocks that are floating through space. Also, we can talk about comets, meteors, meteorites, things like that. So we're going to dive into this topic. Are you ready to join me? Let's get learning. Okay, so we're going to start with a little info about asteroids. And just so you know, there is a thing called an asteroid belt. And that is between Mars and Jupiter. And asteroids are actually orbiting and held in this belt by uh, gravity. And it keeps circling around. Asteroids are very, very large as large as a car up to even a giant mountain. And they are just enormous. So um, they float around being held by gravity in our solar system through the asteroid belt. Now, asteroids can bump into each other within the belt and with so much force can be knocked out of the gravitational ring and get outside of that belt. And then that's where it's set off in a different pattern um, and break pieces break off and it gets outside of that belt. But there are millions of asteroids in the asteroid belt. So I want you to look that information up about an asteroid, about asteroids. The really cool thing I saw recently was um, now there are telescopes that NASA uses and they will actually, some of them have orbited around asteroids and taken some phenomenal pictures. If you can look up those pictures, that is, there you'll be very impressed, but I have a short video I found uh, where they actually were able to touch an asteroid and collect particles from it. It's quite a celebration from NASA, and I would like to share that with you right now. about it behind me and uh, one of the neat things about the meteor is that they are in space and they're giant bits of space rock but it also has other space material with it and when a meteor ends up getting close to earth it and if it gets into our atmosphere, the gas molecules in our atmosphere 
start to break it down and that's where you get this really long flaming fire and it looks like a shooting star. So when you see a meteor shower or shooting stars, they're not really shooting stars. They're not stars at all. They're actually meteoroids entering into our atmosphere and they become meteors. So um, you can see uh, NASA and all um, space, uh, other space websites and stuff like that will post videos regarding meteor showers and stuff. So that's really cool and you can see those coming up. Also, um, if a meteor enters our atmosphere, it usually burns up and there's nothing left. But if it actually, a part of it survives and hits the ground, the earth, it becomes a meteorite. And there are places where you can go to a, a there's actually a local space museum uh, the Joshua Tree in Lakeville and Space Museum where they have meteorites uh, that you can go and see. So check, I would say to check them out. Uh, and so here is a short video about meteors. Nearly 50 tons of space debris crash onto the Earth every day. While some debris shyly dissipate into the atmosphere, others display a spectacular light show. Meteor showers occur when the Earth's orbit intersects with the orbit of a comet. As comets travel, they leave behind trails of rocky material, oftentimes the size of pebbles or grains of sand, but sometimes as large as boulders. Every year, the Earth crosses these trails of debris, known as meteoroid streams, and the planet becomes sprinkled with rocky material. The debris then race through the Earth's atmosphere, creating friction with air particles and generating vast amounts of heat. This heat vaporizes and illuminates the debris as they fall, creating streaks of light in the sky, popularly known as shooting stars. These celestial light shows are often named after the constellation where they appear to originate as seen from Earth's surface. Meteor showers that seem to fall from the constellation Perseus are called the Perseids, and those appearing from the constellation Gemini are called the Geminids. About 30 meteor showers can be seen from Earth throughout the course of a year. And because the showers are timed with Earth's orbit, the celestial phenomena are cyclical and occur at regular intervals. For example, the Perseid meteor shower happens every August and the Geminid meteor shower happens every December. Meteor showers have inspired awe and admiration for millennia, inspiring everything from making wishes to reveling at the sky. Meteor showers are a reminder of our place in a dynamic and beautiful cosmic ecosystem. Now we're going to talk a little bit about comets. You can see in our picture there, comet is an icy body. It actually has three parts, a nucleus, a coma, and a tail. And it can have more than one tail, actually. The tail is always pointed away from the sun, and it orbit, orbits in our solar system. There was an astronomer, his name was Edmund Haley, and he used Newton's mathematics to come up with that comets actually are orbiting and it takes some like 76 years for it to come back around so we can see it. And I bet you know what comet I am talking about. It's a very famous comet and it is named Haley's Comet and it is named after the astronomer Haley, Edmund Haley. The other thing is uh, that the comet is made up of ice, which we said, and I think now would be a very good time to show you a short video about comets. Hello everyone, and welcome to our universe. Today we'll be answering the question, what is a comet? So comets are basically dirty snowballs which orbit the sun. They are generally made of ice. 
such as water, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane, and mixed in with a bit of dust. These materials come from a time when the solar system was barely formed. Comets have an icy center, called the nucleus, and this is surrounded by a large cloud of gas and dust, called the coma. The coma is created as the ice in the nucleus is warmed up by the sun and evaporates. Comets can develop two tails as they travel closer to the sun. The straight tail is the gas tail, and the curved tail is the dust tail. The gas tail is created by the solar wind. This pushes gas away from the comet's coma and pointing it straight back from the sun. The dust from the coma is not affected by the magnetic fields, but is vaporized by the sun's heat, and this forms a curved tail, which follows the comet's orbit. So, I hope that's given you a good insight into what is a comet. And of course, if you'd like to know any more about comets, I'll put some links in the description below. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, click the like button, and if you want to support the channel, click subscribe and support our Patreon page. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your support. Okay, so this week we do have a small craft also for you to do, and so if you want to come get your supplies at the library, you're welcome to. If you have these supplies at home, then you don't need to come into the library and get them, but you can come into the library and get some of these books that I have on the table, and there's plenty more books to research. Um, in our craft bag today, we have, um, you can have your space travel passport. You should have those already, so those won't be in the bag anymore. Uh, if um, you need more, just let me know, and you can write down information. In the bag, we have our comet on a stick craft that I got from the NASA website. So you can get that, and some foil, that's all. A little bit of foil, a it said a chopstick, a popsicle stick, or a library pencil. Like that, and some sparkly ribbon. That's all. And different colors are nice too, or whatever color you like. So some ribbon and a pair of scissors. That is what's in our bag. I also have I printed off for you for grades five through twelve. Twelve. Uh, they have a scientist for a day, um, scientist for a day from NASA that you can get on their website and do that for those who are in fifth grade and older. And it, the topics are all listed there and they're to do with the moons of Uranus. Um, so that's an extra thing for those. Anyway, so let's go ahead and make this craft together. Okay, so we have the foil and our ribbon and our instructions. So we're going to start with cutting five pieces of ribbon. So here is our ribbon and you want to make it as long as you want. So we will cut one and it says cut two, two long ones and two medium ones. So they're different lengths and one short one. Now you can do what you like. And if you have your own ribbon, you will get lots of ribbon that you can use. I'm just following the directions. So here are the ribbons. You're just gonna put the ends together and then you're gonna tie it around your your chopstick or whatever. I'm going to actually kind of tie a knot right now to start it and then uh, stick the pencil in there. <laughs> I'm using a pencil because you're going to have a pencil, a library pencil in your in your bag, not sharpened. But. Okay, so it says to tie that and then you have your long ribbon. Okay, then 
you want to take the three pieces of foil that are roughly a square shape and you're just going to make sure this is pulled away and you're going to, I'm going to actually, I have some of the end pieces. I'm going to actually just, and you make a ball. That's all. You're going to make a ball to be like the nucleus of the comet. Okay? Nope. And then this way. Well, I certainly, there, that will keep it from going down. Okay, so now you take one of your pieces and you're going to just make a ball and make it really, really tight. This is fun to squeeze, okay? And you can get a long dowel rod if you have a dowel rod at home, however long you wanna make it. There's another one. You just want to make sure that your, your comet tail is sticking out of, of the comet area. So we have the nucleus and we have the coma is the, actually is like the gas from it. There. So. We have our Comet of Ice. And then if you want to be, you can take and make it curly, like if you're making a present. And so it's a little, a little curly. And you can use different colors of ribbon. I just have gold right now. Silver would be a really cool color. Some clear or whatever, and then there you go. And now you can, you can glide that through like you're doing, orbiting the sun, and you have it. That's super simple, isn't it? Super simple and easy to use. Fun to play with. Okay, so that is that, and you can come in and get those supplies if you need it. And if you have some at home, you can use the ones you have at home. Okay, thank you for joining us today. Next week, tune in because we'll talk a little bit more about space. And don't forget, mark on your calendar, February 18th, Perseverance, the Mars Lunar Rover is supposed to be, or Land Rover, sorry, is supposed to be landing on Mars. And that will be live streaming. Uh, so make sure I'll send an email just to remind you and I am so glad you joined us We will talk about Mars and show a clip of that video on our night our video of the 19th And then we're going to zoom in on Earth. So next week we're going to be learning about moons Okay, we'll see you then. Bye